All right, if uh, the YouTubes are correct, I should be live. I will wait for confirmation from Shadow and Sun on my sound, and then uh, we'll get started. How do I sound, buddy? Always try to do this early, you know. Hopefully no uh, major crap ups on this one. Let's, uh, let's see here. Who do I want to show off first? Go with the basic bitch. All right. So audio is good. All right. There we go. DW, what is up? All right. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a showcase today just with the... Uh, all of the orc pile of shame has been mitigated except for one model. All right. Which I don't have a base for and I need to strip it because somebody hit it with uh, the army painter red. This uh, shock jump dragster was, was hit with the army painter red. The problem with army painter red is nothing sticks to it. What's up DM James? Uh, nothing sticks to army painter red. This is the worst primer color that money can buy. Beware of Army Painter Red. If you want a good red color, I suggest you get Mephiston, but this is pretty much the last orc model I'm going to do. I'm going to probably re... I'm going to dust it off and respray paint it black and buy a base for it, and I'm probably going to send it out to get painted. So I'm not even going to deal with this model because I, do, I don't want to... Uh, this is definitely one that you have to sub-assemble, so I will make this somebody else's problem. All right? And uh, we've been mitigating all of the piles of shame. So that's just one model that I've got left. Sure, there are other things I can do. I can put more guys on 32 millimeter bases, but there's really no point in t at this time to do that. I have some tank busters that I've got to sort through and get on their new bases. And that's going to be... What's up, Ultimate? And that's going to be the, um, the next project for my orcs going forward is just eliminating the bases because I got a bunch of 32 millimeters and that's where I've got to go. So let's start with the knobs. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this one is uh, this one is Scratch. All right, he's one of the enforcer knobs. Nothing special about him, and uh, he was painted in the first batch of five. All right, this is the other one. This is his brother. Um, I haven't gotten a name. I have. I don't have a name for him, but uh, it might be Scrap. I don't know. Scratch and Scrap sound like pretty good uh, enforcer names. All right, and then uh, you know, so he came in the first batch. Next up, we have uh, I believe Ultimate Warrior named this one when I was painting him. This is old Gore Claw. He would be the leader of the second squad of five because he's got a red claw, and that's how I recognized him out. Now you'll notice that there's no free hand. On these guys, they just got bare bones shoulder plates. I was going for speed. I wanted to get rid of this project, so it's gone. Uh, we have uh, the next lead. We have the leader of the other squad. This is old Buzz Saw. I like that, or Buzzer, as, as I like to call him. He's got a kill saw hand and a big and a combi shooter. It looks like you know, but this is one of those old uh, Citadel mo uh, Citadel mobs from the from the pewter kit. This is a pewter model. These were really good sculpts, and if you glue the plastic arms to these guys, it just works out really, uh, really good. So this is old Buzzsaw. This is his other buddy, uh, Yellow Claw. I, I don't really have a good name for him. Maybe Butch. and call him Butch. But uh, he came in the first batch of five. All right. This guy, I, I think I'm just going to call him Wampa. That'll be good. He's got a big old big chopper there. Not, not so special to him. You guys have seen me painting him. He was in the second batch that was on the table over the weeks. What's up, Wraith? And so, uh, yeah, he's all done. And then uh, my dumbass, I just noticed a mistake right here on the guy that I was given by... Uh, this was the one that Ultimate Warrior gave me. He sent me this knob right here. I forgot to paint his eyes. So he's already been clear-coated, but I am just going to hurry up and do his eyes real fast. <laughs> because, you know, even I, you know, I miss stuff. It's okay. I probably wouldn't have noticed if I wasn't looking at them. I probably never would have noticed. You should see my night goblins. I, there's like still, out of like the 200 night goblins that I painted, there's like four of them with no teeth. <laughs> and their mouths weren't done. I'm like, whoops, missed a couple. So let's just get in there on his eyes real quick. That's why the knobs were on the thumbnail today. 
you know, but you, you keep going and you keep trudging on the same project to mitigate that pile of shame. There we go. One more little dot. Now he has eyes. He can go in the finish pile. Um, let's see. Everybody else has been shown except three of them. So uh, let's go to this guy right here. This is the other. Uh, this is the other uh, claw knob that I have here, and uh, he, he's he's got an orange totem. I, I made a couple of these guys with orange totems, and he doesn't have any eyes. Well, I'm not going to paint the eyes. Uh oh. That's going to cost me some big points on my painting uh, on my painting score at the next tournament, should I ever attend one. Oh, I found a guy with no eyes. How dare you, sir. I'm not even going to worry about it. Uh, I call this guy, he, seeing as how he's from Black Reach and he's just got a slug a chop a combo, I call this one Basic Bitch. All right? This is the Basic Bitch knob. All right? Um, he's been around for a while. This is one of the knobs that I kept. I kept one from Black Reach because, you know, I... You want to have you want to have a little bit of everything in that first squad. I'm probably going to buy two more boxes, but not for a long time. And then finally, the other Scorcha guy. Now, the reason I opted to have two Scorchas in this squad is because one, uh, if you have to stand and shoot, you can stand and shoot for free with those two weapons, and they automatically hit. You might get lucky. You might roll the magic eleven and melt a bunch of uh, and melt a bunch of Tyranids on the way in, you know, or cause some damage. But you know. Uh, you, when you when you have an orc armor, you want to eliminate as much of the to hit rolls as you can. So, uh, in my goth list right now, um, I'm looking at it right now. Everything that shoots that I rely on for shooting has ballistic skill four. I have one rucka truck with nitro squigs. That's ballistic skill four. I have two waz bombs with all of the good weapons on them. The the uh, teleport blasters and the uh, smasher guns. All of those hit on 4+. plus. Not to mention I have a unit of 10 flash kits. They hit on a 4+. plus. So anything that I... Oh, and then the boss bunker, which is uh, which is this building right here. I'm not going to tell you who made this. Uh, the guy's a douchebag. He turned into a total creepazoid. This is what I'm using for my boss bunker. Um, you know, it, it, I mean, he just... You know, I, I knew him from way back when, and when you're 32 years old and you don't have $20 for gas money to come up and do a Kings of War battle report, you are lazy or you are a loser. He's like, oh, my, my girlfriend just lost her job and it's a real stressful time. I don't think I have $20 for my smart car, for my smart car to drive up and play a game with you. But, um, no, this is what I'm using for my boss bunker. I am going to buy the uh, model. I am going to keep this. This is a pretty good model made out of straws and plastic card. You know, it looks very orky. I actually originally used this as my uh, teleport. Uh, my, uh, what do you call it? My force field generator. And then uh, anything else that I'm bringing, like, uh, like things that don't shoot, like the, the Mega Knobs themselves... They, uh, they actually just have rocket launchers, and I'm hoping to get lucky. Except for the one unit that I'm bringing with kill saws. They have a purpose. They're going to be next to Gazgul. They're going to be his guardians. Let me catch up on chat here. Don't forget to cross your T's and lowercase J's. Wayne's World reference. Oh, yeah, that's true. I guess I should paint that guy's eyes on, but, you know, it's... Ah, oh, God, it's just so much work. Oh, bo hum and bollocks. This hobby actually requires a monicum of work. And then we got Shadow. Pile of shame. <laughs> I have over a hundred minis arriving over the next six months. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, it never ends. It never ends. But mitigating that pile, absolutely. We are going to mitigate that pile. We're going to get rid of the pile. Next week, I'll be painting some more Conquest guys. And I'll actually have a character model to show you. I've still got a stuffy nose. So let's get his eyes. What's uh, Ultimate Warrior makes a good point. I'm going to use my lazy man's little brush here. He makes a good point. Got to cross your T's and dot your J's. Let's get his eyes on. I can't believe that. Mork and Gork would be, would be very displeased with me. All right. Now the unit is complete. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Let's hit the bricks. 
I just finished. I've been busy all morning, all the way up until now. I was doing some boxing drills in the garage before I came in here. Where the hell did I put that thing's tube? Okay, one tube is as good as another. And I guarantee halfway through the stream I'll find the tube. Oh, this is the tube. All right, all right. That's my one size... Uh, Z one zero dash zero paintbrush. I use it for eyes specifically. It doesn't come out that often. So with the theme of today, we are actually going to uh, fin try uh, today. I know for a fact I'm finishing these last six models. All right, these guys are on the precipice of being done. These guys need their inks. So what I'm going to do here is I was partial to the uh, skin wash. Uh, from the game color range and everything and uh, Basically uh, just I'm gonna start with this color. I'm gonna give it a good shake This is definitely one of those ones a darker ink like brown or black doesn't require a BB But any other color I've noticed like their dark green doesn't require one, but I think I put one in there Let's see which one. Yeah, the purple I put one in there and uh, The flesh wash the skin wash I put one in there and this I'll give you the serial number at 72 Point zero three nine from the Vallejo range, um, you know, just so you have this. This is a really good color. What's up, Logan? Let me catch up and chat real fast before I get into this. Um... Chamfer display, the shadow and sun chamfer display. I don't know what that means. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Um, we are about to start another 40K. My buddy Dylan has joined the group. He's making pretty good headway with his Thousand Sons army. He's come a long way. Um, I actually, uh, that, that army was put together by my friend uh, Anthony, who owns the Fellblade. The, he's a big chaos dude, and he likes to make chaos uh, great again. And so, as a matter of fact, I, I'm fighting World Eaters tomorrow. I would much rather fight the World Eaters than the Thousand Suns because uh, in the last game I did kill Magnus. My my planes threw, flew back on the table and shot Magnus dead with teleport blasters. But um, uh, the, the the Marines are really durable, and you know with and so, and now that they don't have armor of contempt. It's not that bad, you know, they're not minus three before they start having minuses to their armor save. So, you know, th there is that, but th they're a pretty solid list. He's built them a pretty solid list. And, you know, and this is how you teach people how to play, like whether it's fantasy or 40K, you give them a solid list to play with. You give them a solid army to play with and you force them to kind of use the same thing over and over until you learn the nuances of what you have. So he really only has roughly about I want to say 2,200 points, and we're, and he's been using the same thing over and over, trying to get to uh, to know that, you know. Whereas like me, I've been playing 40k for 20 years, and all I understand is Orc Smash. So I'm gonna get this mixed up real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think six will be enough for three. We'll put seven in there, just in case. I am gonna put two drops of water in it, you know. One. Two. All right, and the reason I, I, I'm just a little more partial to flesh wash. It's a little bit brighter than mud on or brown. I love that mud on, mud on. <laughs> the Spanish. You know, learn Spanish while you paint. And so uh, we're going to use our uh, Reaper, our Klonsky size three, and we're just going to start putting that all over the leather and the faces. It goes really good on faces, but we'll do it on the leather. Because it provides a good base coat for your leather and anywhere that isn't going to be red. It's okay if you spill over a little bit, but, you know, just mitigating the pile of shame and, uh, you know, making sure that work doesn't stop. As a matter of fact, I was trying to get some sprues for the Macedonians that DM James gave me. I was trying to get some of those on board, but I, I have to pick through a couple of them and uh, make sure that I every guy that I paint has a good lance to go in his hand because some of the lances are broken. But that's okay. I, I, have, I have enough replacement parts from doing all the Macedonians that I've done that I'm confident that I can get 100 of them done. I don't think I'll get 100 done this year, but I think that I can, uh, I can definitely replace 40 of my guys. Let's see here. So we're just going to ink his uh, leather real fast. There we 
we go. Uh-huh. Go down in here a little bit. I have to throw the cat outside. Because it, isn't it weird how the moment I start filming, he all of a sudden wants to come down uh, stairs. The moment I got set up and was ready to film the Holy Diver show today, and uh, he, the moment he got up out of this chair, usually when he's in my paint chair, he's he's in there for half the day. He'll sleep. And I, but the moment I turn on that camera, oh, here, what's going on? Let me see what's going on. Oh, are you trying to film, bro? There's no going. To, there's no filming the without me, bro. What's up, bro? You trying to go to the bathroom? There's no going. He'll follow me into the bathroom. There's no going to the bathroom without me. I'm here to provide moral support. Are you, are you crowning, bro? That's that's general. All right, you're painting some battle tech. Did you sell your battle your stuff? No, I did not sell my battle tech stuff. <clears throat> what is the brimstone Kickstarter shadow? Oh, 70 Blood Angels. Yeah, speaking of uh, 30K uh, GM, I am going to be doing some of my uh, Imperial Fists pretty soon. I'm going to actually part, uh, part and get some of my stuff that I got in a box set with a buddy of mine so that I can actually start bringing some of those guys online. And then, uh, let's see. Shameful display. Shameful display. Shameful this I, I don't know I, I don't know where you're going with it. <laughs> uh, lol, I kid. Okay. Totally at least you guys have two man advantage. Oh yeah, it, it is helpful when somebody uh can edit footage for you. I mean I saw that's what that's what old uh creature feature was supposed to do was edit the footage I, I provide the talent he provides the technical expertise and he is a gifted editor i will always surrender that if um some of the stuff that he can throw together is just amazing it's beyond me I, it's not that i don't have the capacity to learn it but i i don't have the time to put in like i've just barely learned how making a basic thumbnail on gimp works i've still got a long ways to go i've got to learn how Streamyards works um, there's uh, some third-party super chat uh, programs that I can get out there that and I've got to learn how those work and everything you know so there's always something you can learn Wild West vs Cthulhu massive board game okay sounds cool what's up Andrew No more orcs. I, I have mitigated the pile of shame if you watch the beginning of this video a little bit later you will understand everything the orcs as a pile of shame have been mitigated i even have the five guys that i rebased they're sitting though they're sitting over there where they got clear coated earlier in the week now i will be honest with you people i did kind of bleep off this entire week we got two feet of snow i shoveled nine driveways each of them with 18 to 12 inches of snow we never really ever get 18 inches of snow in the valley that was a that was a big storm that was a very, 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 very big storm. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it's not big for, like, if you live in a lake state. But here, the, the snow can accumulate very fast, very rapidly because of our elevation, which makes things worse. So I, I did a lot of snow shoveling. And, you know, after you do, like, nine driveways, I was just, I didn't even go to boxing on Friday. I went to dinner. <laughs> I got off work on Friday and uh, went to dinner. We, I mean, we haven't even been working full-time hours this week because of it. Uh, we didn't work Wednesday. I worked a little bit on Thursday and uh, got... I was going to film the show Thursday and I got stuck in traffic, which kind of pissed me off. And then um, I shoveled some more after work and then just trying to make that side hustle work, you know. See, we got any other leather? We can put some leather down there, get a little bit more on our brush. There we go. I think we're good. Me thinketh we're good. What's up, Nikos? It's always good. Glad to see everybody coming out of the woodwork for this one. Um, but yeah, I, I just when you when you shovel all that snow and you know you just luckily the driveways were small, but I still had to like put my shovel in and walk it to the pile where I, because I couldn't push it, you know? So, um, you know, I got some, I, I got some extra cash to show for my troubles. And, uh, 
Life is good. Life is good. I'm sitting here doing my uh, thing on online here. And I'm I'm very hopeful to uh, get these guys done today because I'm sick of looking at them. I want to move on to my, uh, my militia and my theist priest before my household guard arrive. I ordered the new book for um, Conquest, Last Argument of Kings. And I am going to do some battle reports on that. I've got to get a... I've got to st I, I, I was supposed to do a lot of historical research this week for uh, Thermopylae and start writing the next show. But I think I'll do that Monday. I'll do some... I'll do about an hour of research and an hour of note card making... And I'll probably... That one won't take as long. Thermopylae isn't a very big battle. And that'll be the April show. And I, I and, the, and the ranger has to attend for that one. I, I don't know if we're going to do it live, but uh, it might just be a pre-taping and everything. All right, let's uh, get this other guy back here. Let me catch up on chat. I'm glad it gets you motivated to paint. That's the whole point of this. You start you you were able to convince your friends to do something? I am very envious of you, sir. I can't convince my friends to do very much. I'm kind of I'm kind of passed around like a scrub, although I have won a couple of games recently and done good in my I I, I thought I did good in my last World Eaters game. Um I, I had one plane left, he had Angron left, and I flew off the table in turn five. Because there was no way I could avoid him from where I was at. Shot at him what I could and called it good. But uh, it came down to one model versus one model. So I'm looking forward to the rematch. Uh, a good, uh, a good uh, what do you call it, uh, campaign in fantasy would be fun. It would be fun to do a, a fantasy campaign. Again, I was watching that Rogue Element guy with his... 200 likes a video, freaking bastard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> showing my bit HD, showing his bitterness. All right, all right. I think that is the ink. Let's see if this first guy dried. He dried already. The good thing about inks versus washes is inks uh, dry a lot faster. You're glad you're in the South now? I don't blame you. Um, you know, as you get older, you might decide that you hate the cold. You might decide that you hate the cold. And I don't blame you there. I have 100% decided I hate the cold. That's okay, too. You don't really, you know, just as long as you did a little bit. Take a little bit of time for yourself, even if you are looking for work, buddy. There's no shame in that, you know. I mean, uh, last time I lost my job was in uh, end of 2019. I just took five weeks off, and that's how my Greeks got poofed into existence. And I painted, I believe I painted, I believe I painted all of them in five weeks. All of them in five weeks. I got all of them done in five weeks. I'd have to look back and check out the showcase, but that's... Um, I'm going to just add up the total here. Let's see here. 40 times 4. Give me one second. Plus 4. Plus 2. 166... Oh, let's see. How many was that? How many was that? Twelve. Plus one, four. Okay. All right. I know the exact number now. Plus 24. It was 190 models in five weeks. Of course, that's all I did. That is all I did for five weeks was paint uh, the Greeks. I think uh, it, I think I might have finished off a few of them um, 
uh, later on with the as far as basing goes, but having the paint down on all the models and being 100% painted, but not based, that I was about 190 models. Five, six, seven. We are going to use uh, red ink for their. Um, as you can see, these guys are red with a blue shield. We're going to use red ink to uh, base up their. Um, to base up their fabric and everything, and then we'll do uh, metals. What's up, Mr. Dynamite? Always a pleasure. You got some people over? That's okay. I'm glad you stopped in to say hi. Oh, you know, you can always rewatch it and leave a comment then. That really helps in the algorithm and, and stuff like that. So let's uh, let's move on to our next color, which is the um, Rojo Game Color Ink. And uh, we'll do that. One, two, we'll do three, three drops to dilute that. It's always uh, two to two to four drops. Let me test it on the on your right there, but we're just gonna go down. And we're gonna get the, we're gonna prep the fabric. If I wanted to, I can mix. Uh, uh, I want some of these to be a little darker. I want some of these guys to be a little lighter. You know, nothing special. If I wanted to, I could use Mephiston, but I think I'm going to use Evil Scarlets on a couple more of these guys. You know. You've got to mitigate that shame. Oh, busy week. Busy but unproductive week in the office. Very unproductive in the office. And yeah, I, I skipped boxing and b mostly because my sp my usual sparring partner wasn't going to be there and I was tired and I had a birthday party to go to and I didn't want to just come in and say hi and then leave. The thing that annoys me is that whenever I'm around my mother, she always asks me like the dumbest, most obvious questions. Why aren't you going to boxing? Because... Uh, we changed the time of the party to 6. I box at 7. So what am I going to do? Show up for 15 minutes and then and then leave? We haven't even eaten. There's no cake. We didn't even sing happy birthday. All right. That's, that has gone over well. You don't. You want to. You also want to make sure the ink doesn't pull up in too many places. But that's okay. You can cover it very easily. Ink is very sticky, and it dries quick. Well, good. I well. I, I wish you well, uh, Mr. Dynamite. Are you talking about the uh, orc vehicle I showed earlier, Shadow? The one that's all uh, like, you know, I should try inking it, um, but the the problem with uh with the problem with that particular color is that it's just nothing good stick, nothing sticks to it. Uh, you know, army painter, what do you call Ar army painter red primer is a trap. It really is a trap. I'm in frame today. Life is good. It's okay if they mix a little bit. But that, just try to get it on. All right. All right. Let's bring you back up for a second. Double up. Respread it. All right. Get you 
you standing back up. Let's take a look at you. You don't have a lot of red fabric. We'll actually have to change brushes for you. You're mostly uh, leather armor, cloth armor. And as usual, I always get out too much ink. That's okay. This stuff will stay good. This ink will stay good until I'm ready to uh, finish painting. Finish with the colors. Let's hurry up and get through this process and start the other guys while these ones dry. Right. That is done and over with. Let's uh, move on to these guys who are further along than their comrades. Now, as you can see, this is kind of what it looks like after you get the metal on and after you get the ink on. So the first thing I noticed is let's, let's move to the red. Red's going to be me the messier part, and then we'll move to the leather brown. Now, I'll catch up in chat right now. You, you might. I don't know. Are you talking about the Primer Ultimate Warrior with uh, the Army Painter Red? Oh, okay, so they're, oh, they're going over, okay, so Gron the Punch is invading, uh, is this before or after he invaded Urathon? So he's going into Nolan, that sounds, that sounds like a lot of fun, Gron the Punch, uh, they made a model for him, uh, one of those third party people made a pretty good model for him. Um, it, it painting up cavalry is easy. Just glue the guy. Take the sh don't glue the shield on unless you can't avoid glue gluing the shield on. Just put the guy on the horse and paint it. Spread spread that jelly. Do it. Spread it. it. It shouldn't be that hard. I will actually get to painting some cavalry pretty soon because I think that's a that's an issue a lot of people struggle with. Um, bikers not so bad. Orc bikers aren't really that bad. Um, you know, if you want to get to, if you want to get good at something, just do a lot of it. Do a lot of it, and you know, then it just that light bulb will turn on. You know, practice makes perfect. You want to make sure that bridge is wide enough to. You want to. Here's how wide your bridge needs to be while, while you scratch build that. I think, I think uh, bridges need to be huge for fantasy games, just so you can fit units on there. Uh, let me get one of these movement trays. So a, I think the bridge should be just a little bit wider than this. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10, 20 millimeter squares across. I think you should be slightly wider than that. Maybe wide enough to hold uh, 10, 25 millimeter squares across, and that's how, break, how big your bridge should be. And the, uh, the edges of the bridge, they should just be flat so that you can just prop the unit down on it and actually fight for the bridge. Um, that, that was one thing that I did with my hills. And I, 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 I get thank you for that. The ranger still thanks me to this day. For these hills that I made, there's nothing special about them other than the fact that they are huge. And, I mean, look at this. It, it totally eclipses the painting space. But I can fit 
three units on this on this uh like i can get a horde of orcs on here and i can get two units of elves on here or something like that um this is this is just you know you want to you want to make sure that they're usable and i think that's where a lot of people struggled with uh the terrain and fantasy and everything is that the terrain wasn't usable because one you didn't make it big enough you know so you know just i was just giving you some warning you can do whatever you want of course but that's what I would do if I had to build a bridge scenario. I'd make the bridge very big so that you could actually get guys, get regiments onto the bridge. All right, let's see what these homeboys are up to. We are going to take a little bit of this uh, Scarlet Evil Sun's Lair. And we're going to go in here with our big brush. A Reaper size too. We are going to dip it a little bit in there. All right, here we go. I'm going to wait for that to uh, drip down so it doesn't get inside the uh, thing here. We'll go right back to painting. And you can just see how quickly that red sticks to the ink. You know, with one layer, one little half layer, that red just sticks right to the ink and you just whip it right out. Oh, and uh, for, you, for you patrons out there, um, I will not be premiering the next show. That was a mistake. last last This month, that was a mistake. I, I did not mean to premiere the show. I didn't know if you premiered the show. You couldn't have uh, people privately watch it. So I will not be premiering the next Holy Diver show like I did. And uh, the, the week the Holy Diver show releases, I think we're looking at the second week of March or maybe the first weekend of March, there will be no uh, hangout. I will take the day off, so I will not do. I will not do a hangout, and I will reannounce that on the uh, Holy Diver show. I think I'll release it uh, Saturday at noon, the same time that I would normally do the stream. That way, there's no confusion, you know. All right, now I can open this up and take a little bit of that paint out, dip it in the ink. We can just keep going. Ura. But I am going to get it edited, and uh, for those of you who are patrons, you will be able to view it probably by tonight. So, you know, uh, it, it should be ready but right after the stream. As a matter of fact, how long I've been going. All right. We'll probably do a shorter stream than last week, maybe an hour and 30 minutes, so that I have time to uh, buzz off and get the footage edited and stuff like that because there's a lot of things i did the show twice and i i think both times it was equal but you know it, it's net the shows are never going to be perfect they're never going to be perfect but i think i know what i need to do on the next show so the next show is going to be a historical one so that's all just going to be pen and paper make sure you have your notes Nothing special, no, nothing major. Me and the Ranger with our historical back and forth. Then we will actually do the Battle of Marathon. I mean the Battle of uh, Thermopylae. And then uh, that will replace one of the exclusives on Patreon. And that will, one of the exclusives on Patreon will get released to the public finally. And uh, that, and, But don't expect Thermopylae to come out until we get to Plataea. I'm going to hold 100% on that for as long as possible. Because again, there's, with the way things are analytically, all I can do is cater to the audience I have. I don't think I'm growing anymore. I have no more growth left in this channel. No more growth. So all I can do is uh, just sort of try to win you guys over as much as possible. It's okay by me. So much to do. So little time. So little left. So little time left to do it in. All right. I think that'll work. 
Just a little bit of red right there. There we go. All right, he's got his red. Get up and I'll get on some chat. Excuse me here. Oh yeah, that, that model you sent me, I gotta figure out what I can do with him if I have any orc bits that will uh, give him uh, the parts he needs to be complete. I, I thank you for that guy too. Um, Okay, under Dieter the Fourth. Okay, so uh, I didn't know Nolan was the capital. I always thought, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what is that place? Altdorf was the capital. I, I thought Altdorf was the most important city there. Okay. Okay, so his army was destroyed in Urathon because he got blown off course. That makes a lot of sense. That is some good... See, in the stories in Warhammer, just awesome. I think they're awesome, you know. They're just... You know, they have a good reason for why everything happens. And that's why I think an anthology... An anthology film uh, style would work so good. If you did a 20-minute short film on Grom the Punch and, it, Punch and his battles in, in the fantasy world, that would be really great. And then you move on and you do some other uh, leader. Maybe you do a couple of a campaign led by Tyrion, the Defender, or something like that. Yeah, my, my friend does a lot of dry brushing with makeup brushes. Me, I, I, I've got to get some better dry brushes. Uh... I threw. I have one dry brush that I gotta get online here. Um, but uh, you know, I haven't. I haven't had a need for it just right now. What's up, Craig? And, and uh, Mr. Well Hung and Dung. Always a pleasure. Let's get back to this. I think we are switching size. We are switching the size of the brush now. And we're continuing with red because these guys are wearing more leather than uh, overcloth. I bet you I missed the ends of his legs. Oh no, I didn't. They were covered up. All right, keep going. But when I post the HD show tonight on uh, Patreon, I want to hear from you guys. So if you're not doing anything, uh, let me know how it went. Let me know how it went. You can look for the show to drop the first weekend of March, probably at the same time that I stream. I'm just not going to premiere it anymore. I think that system will work a lot better than what I've been doing. 
and I, I won't release anything else. Uh, I don't want a video to have to compete with it. That's kind of what slowed down the likes on the other one. Get in there. Go after that little spot right there. All right. A little more red. A little more. All right, done. I will actually have all of my men at arms done tonight. I am I am getting so much work done, even though I've been a lazy sack of crap the whole week. I've been too tired to work. Too tired. Let's keep this up. Uh, let's get the red finish and I'll catch up on chat here. Hopefully we don't get any more snow this year. I am so over the winter. I am so over winter. It's not even funny. All right, there's that. All right, we are officially done with the red. We will move on to the um, cloth armor next. some cloth armor going there it is and for the base coat on the cloth armor I'm going to use uh, Zandri dust and then when I'm done I'm just going to highlight it with a with a little with a drop of uh, p3 men off white and the Zandri dust a little 50 50 all right let's see here You just picked up three dark elf combat patrols, you lucky, you lucky duck. That's a that's that's a good chunk of change there. Are they the are they for fantasy or do you mean dark eldar? Just uh, clarification there. Um, I, I I do still have a goblin army. I do uh, I I might collect a couple more things for it, but um, I have not played Kings of War since last March um in tennessee simply because you know nobody plays around here anymore um on one of these streams i went into I, I think it was on stream eight but on one of the live streams i got into a pretty good detailed explanation um i do have a lost episode of i have one lost episode on patreon it was a complete battle report from my glory days that i forgot to uh that i forgot to um film um but you know just uh the one store that was heavily into kings of war they don't play it anymore everyone is age of sigmar and um i i i believe that p i i will make a comeback uh doing some commando battle reports um in stores when fantasy comes back i will do a couple of those at least get my uh punches in on some people but uh yeah kings of war if uh my friends are willing to play it i'd play it but uh, they're more into uh, Conquest, Last Argument of Kings, which is a book written by the same guy who did Kings of War. And the best part is there's no rules committee. It can be a little bit rough, but 
I think uh, my, my showing in Conquest is going to get a little bit stronger because I'm going because I've I, I've learned how to play the game and now I'm about to reread the second uh, edition rulebook for Conquest: Last Argument of Kings, and um, I'm going to reread how my army works and then I'm going to pick up a couple of more things and then cap off that uh, 100 Kingdoms army of mine definitely this year probably not more than. 50 models need to be done for that army not more than 50 because i already own i already own close to 2000 points as a matter of fact i'm going to have a showcase for my 100 kingdoms uh being complete pretty soon um i've got to go buy more tupperwares that's another problem i have i have all these tupperwares and uh the one tupperware i have for 100 kingdoms only has us the knights i got I, I got my other guys out there who are freshly painted and they're collecting dust you know so you got some Drukari, that's good. I'm envious. If you're able to travel and get your games in, that would be pretty cool. I'd like to go and uh, 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 travel and uh, play some uh, play some people uh, again. That would be actually fun. Uh, Adepticon would have been fun, but you know, it, again, you know, it's just I don't want to go to Chicago. End of story. I don't want to go to Chicago. I think I think the biggest problem I have with Adepticon is that they don't rotate the city that it's in. So it's always got to be in Chicago, which works out great if you live anywhere in the on on the East Coast. On the yeah, on the East Coast. If you live anywhere on the East Coast, but if you're in the mountain states or California, that's a bit of a flight, you know. I mean, uh, yeah, I will sit down for three hours and fly to Chicago on Southwest, but I wish they alternated it away from Chicago and put it in Denver. What, what, or, yeah, De just put it in Denver every other year. How hard is that? Put, put, put Adepticon in Denver every other year. You know, I mean, yeah, bleep you, you know. I, I was, uh, next year I probably will be going to LVO. And that means I'll have to do my due diligence on, uh, what do you call it? On either Conquest or 40K. I'll probably do two tournaments. I will probably uh, drive down to St. George and then uh, spend the night there. And then uh, play one tournament one day. And then uh, crash in Mesquite. Oh, I'll, probably, I'll probably book a room in Mesquite. Because I don't want to stay in Vegas. I do not want to stay in Vegas. Vegas sucks. And it seems like when, even when I'm in my semi and I'm on the freeway, it seems like whenever I come close to dying on the freeway or getting in a major accident, it's always in Vegas. Vegas drivers are the worst scum, are the scum of the earth. Ah, God. Don't get me started on Vegas drivers. Start off with a little Xandri. We're just going to take this around the cloth. And then the leather leather will be next after we finish uh, the Xandri and stuff. Okay, we'll keep going around. Yeah, I wish I could travel. Um, uh, soon enough, though, I, I'll get out from this uh, appalling winter. I'll start making money again. I'll pay off my last $1,500 assessment, which I've already got the money for. I just have to wait until June. And then... Um, I should be I should be able to go on a nice vacation next year, you know. I'm very frugal in the way that I spend my money. Should be able to go on a nice vacation next year. But you know, all all bets are off. If I if I up and decide that the time is right for me to go to like Japan or something next year, well then that 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 kills the entire travel budget for the year. That's that's a three thousand dollar plane ticket. Um, because I will fly business class. I, I do not want to be in coach on a trans-Pacific Pacific Ocean flight. 
Oh, God, no, I could not do that. Plus, you know, that's a long time away from home. Oof. Did I mention I hate travel? I, I suck at traveling. I am not a very good traveling guy. That's why I'm not an... That's why I was never an over-the-road trucker. That's why I was never an over-the-road trucker. I'm just not... I'm not travel-friendly, you know? Last time I went to Chicago, I had to take laxatives so that I could go to the bathroom regularly, you know? <laughs> so that my gut wouldn't turn into the Thunderdome, where everything enters and nothing comes out. Worst part about a Depicon or LVO is if you're if you're staying at the hotel, you're well less so a less so LVO. But if you're at a Depticon, you're basically trapped unless you have a friend who showed up with a car. You are basically trapped. Missed an area. Missed a spot. Okay, good. Then there's the trouble of even getting a business class ticket. You got people who fly all the time. That's all they do is fly for like work or whatever. When they decide that you got people who have like club cards with the airlines and they're given preferential treatment on how they can buy their tickets and everything. I don't need, I just want to fly business. I don't need first class. I don't need a, I just want to be up front and have a little bit of leg room. I'm not going to fly comfort plus. I'm going to fly one step above comfort. But then I met, I also hate Delta. Let's just face it, I hate all airlines. You know, I mean, it's not bad if you want to go down to, you know, if you, like I said, if you're going to Chicago or Denver, you know, you can get on a plane and, you know, you sit there for three hours and just be an adult, like going to church or something. Well, let's catch up and chat here. Um, you can, you should check, Logan, you should check out the channel Rogue Element. That guy, you know, it, it's, it's unfair. His analytics are unfair, but, um, check out what he does. Um, you know, uh, you can check out some of my older battle reports for fantasy. People do like to see the dice rolls. So basically what I, what, what the, the format that I would put forward for battle reports is, um, uh, at the top of turn one, show where everybody's deployed. And then come back after movement and magic. Explain what happened in the magic phase and then go through the shooting phase. If there's any combats on turn one, go to the biggest combat and then do a cap off, you know. So you want to probably be around, I'd say anywhere from 30 to 30 minutes to an hour, but no more than an hour. And if you do go to a turn seven, give yourself that hour and 15 minutes. I don't think that... Uh, an hour and 15 minutes is bad, uh, you know, but two hours for one game, ah, it's, it's kind of hard. You have to keep coming back to it, you know, and I, you know, I don't have two hours to watch an entire game, but you know, an hour and 15, yeah, I, I will sit down and be an adult and do it, do it that way. And then, uh, when you, if you're sitting there doing commando, you know, you, uh, the best thing you can do is get yourself, uh, one of these. I just dug one out and bought another one. I actually forgot I had this under the back seat of my car. Where that uh, you know, so if you're doing commando, you've got your camera in one hand. Basically, you can just put all your dice in here, roll it out like that, and uh, that's how you roll your dice and you count up. And then maybe you have a dice tray. People like to see that, but just just go through it from left side to right side and don't get too close. Just just hold the camera right here. Um, you know, just uh, even I have trouble doing that the way or you can you can do the battle reports the same way. Uh, what's his name does them in uh, mountain miniatures. 
He doesn't do a bad battle report. It's the fact that they get sidetracked a lot and they do them live. That's a big problem. They, they get sidetracked a lot and they do them live and then they don't go back and re-edit them or something like that. So you're looking at like sometimes three hour video. Three hour video because it's a hangout session. But the way they do it, they have a couple of cameras set up and it's more of a... I mean, they, they have that whole area at uh, Mini Wargaming where it's one cubicle uh, that has a certain wall theme. The next cubicle has a certain wall theme. And it's got all the camera and light shit up top. You know, I don't expect that kind of quality. But make sure you get yourself a couple of good lights, a good handy cam, you know, and one of these dice rolling cups, you know, and you just roll the stuff out when you're ready. Because you'll only have, you'll only have your left hand to work with. But keeping it up here and just point it at the table and keeping it at the unit, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Let's keep it going, though. Malorian, uh, let's see, he, he would do the picture battle reports, they, but that guy is a few bats short of a belfry, you know. He is not a nice person to talk to. I tried talking to him a few times. Got He just ignores you. Bitter, angry Canadian. He just ignores you. Of course, my, my video, nothing I do is liked in Canada. Nothing I do is liked in Canada. It's hilarious. Like, the Canadians hate me the most. I have, like... <laughs> Like, 1% of my audience is in Canada. It's hilarious. Oh, I can hear him meowing outside. That's cute. He wants in. Screw you, General. I don't need you down here trying to sit in my lap while I paint. Pretending that you need attention. And then when I give him the attention, he doesn't want the attention. You little bastard. He'd be out there throwing his... He'd be in here throwing a tantrum. I'd have to throw a can at him. Guzzle a can and throw it at him. Wow, I want in. It's cold, yeah. There's two feet of snow on the ground, bastard. Enjoy it while it lasts. You freaking ski bums. I don't know. I also got to get that movie review written. But I don't know if I'm going to do another one in Q1. Quarter one. I might get it done and release it for Halloween. Release it as one of the ones for Halloween. So I want to be... A, a report ahead. Let's see where we're at here. Uh, why would I go to the Philippines for a wife? That seems like a long way to go for a wife, you know. I mean, I like I told my mom, I'm pretty much a confirmed bachelor at this point. Um, you know, there's just, you know, there, there is one woman that I'm going to reason with later on uh, in the year, maybe. We're going to have that talk, but there's, um, Philippines, no, no, I, I, I'm not going to Philippines, uh, I, 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 my choice is like if I was going to get an Asian bride or Japan or Vietnam. Japan or Vietnam, um, and, and that's when you become a passport bro and you don't leave the rice paddy. Like, you go to some part that's on the outskirts of Nagasaki. You don't live in Nagasaki. You live 20 miles away from Nagasaki, and you're never leaving. You're never, you're never ever leaving. You know, you, once you have a wife in a foreign country, you can't bring her back to the United States. They have too many rights in divorce court. And once they learn English and they start talking to American women, they will get corrupted. They will get corrupted and they, you know, and they'll cash you out for cash and prizes, you know. And, and it's just, you know, that, that's the whole reason passport bros exist is because divorce courts exist in the United States and the UK and they're terrible. They are terrible engines that just destroy men into wage slave status.
Uh, no, he's an Aussie. He's He sounds British, but he's an Aussie. He lives in Australia. He lives near uh, Brisbane. Uh, I know he lives in the south. Uh, so, like, you got Tasmania on the ba on the bottom. He lives, uh, he, I think he lives in Brisbane. Um, so, you know, uh, but he makes a good battle report. You know, I give it to him. I, I'll, I'll tip my hat to him. You know, I wish I could get that kind of... Uh, that that kind of support for a sixth edition game. I think sixth edition kind of a shit a shit show as far as the rules are concerned because, um, you know, it, it there he in this current one with lizard men he's ran into a few snags. You know, it's like um like here's how limited the rules are in sixth edition. Your flyers have to land and then walk into the forest. So it takes them three turns just to be able to declare a charge on anything in the forest. So I have to land, walk into the forest. And then I have to wait for your turn, and then I have to go back to my turn to see if I can get you, you know? So it's like, you might as well just play 8th. It's a lot cleaner. Um, I don't know what it's like for 7th. I would have to reread it, but, you know, I mean, it's not bad. It, it, it punches a good nostalgic button and a uh, good presentation. little more bone there we go let me uh let me hurry up and highlight this junk Let me hurry up and highlight this junk, this bollocks. Cool thing is there's another guy on the TFM show. He's called Thunder Warrior and he lives in Australia. <laughs> and he, he he does not he doesn't like abos and he's like, "Well, you know, they're not having aboriginals around isn't that bad." He says, "If you need your dick sucked, you can get one to, you can get one of those girls to do you in for half a tank of gas." <laughs> right? You can get a you can get a rum tum taga from an abo woman for half a tank of petrol. <laughs> A <laughs> rum tum tugger. <laughs> Crikey, Sheila, you got a nice ass. You know what you need? Boyfriend, how about you come back to my place and give me the rum tum tugger? <laughs> rum tum tugger. <laughs> uh, uh, of course, I found a tube later. Boom. All right, those two colors eliminated. We'll go to snakebite leather, which is a color I overuse, but, you know, keep it simple, keep it done. Let's see here. Let's get back here.
Yeah, it's a must. Uh, you you got to have that display out there. Everything's got to be done or close to done or look done from three feet if you're doing a battle report. Tugboat Z, what's up? Well, that's nice she came back to you. I'm glad it worked out, you know. That's that's some wholesome stuff right there, you know. I'm, do you speak perfect Japanese? Because I could sure use some help learning that language. But, of course, I, I'm not really go Like, meeting a woman is just an added bonus. I wouldn't really be going, uh, you know, uh, to uh, just find a woman. I would literally be going to uh, work in the agricultural sector, you know, do manual labor jobs on the farm, and actually be a net benefit, you know. I mean, because I, I see an opportunity there, you know, especially if I'm able to buy a house for very cheap. I see ads for, like, like I've been looking into some of the real estate around the country and everything, you know. I mean, I can get a house for sixty-six grand, really. But I think you have to be a citizen to own land, so I'm not sure of that. But for sixty-six grand, I can get a full. I can get a two-bedroom house. That that's not a bad. Uh, that's not a bad spread, especially if you're looking to retire early. You know, I mean, you just don't live in Tokyo. You know. Let's see here. Leather brown. We're going to do the belts. Then we'll move on to flesh. And uh, this one guy has a mustache. I'm just going to do that yellow real quick. He's going to have a Hulk Hogan mustache. Ah, that ain't good. Ugh. How are we doing on battery? Oh, good. I used the good battery today, gentlemen. Little bit of Windex. Oh, I heard it was a hard language to learn, but it, hey, if you can read and write a little bit, you, you know, that's a pretty good skill. Like, uh, I tell my nieces and nephews, if you want to learn a language, learn an Asian language. Learn Vietnamese, Japanese, or, um, Chi or, or uh, Mandarin. Learn Vietnamese, Mandarin, or, or Japanese. If you learn Mandarin, you know, you might get a job in Singapore, you know? That's an important one. Learn Mandarin or Japanese or Vietnamese. You know, learn an Asian language. Because it doesn't matter if you know Spanish. Where I live, there are these things called native speakers that will run circles around you any day of the week. And it doesn't matter how studious you became in the language. All right? They're called native speakers, and they will run circles around you. So knowing Spanish isn't really even a skill anymore out where I live. Yeah, I want to be fluent enough just to understand some of the movies that I watch. Yes, relationships are hard and they require a lot of work. And I'm a very, very lazy individual. I am a lazy man. I am not, I am not lying there when I say that I am lazy when it comes to relationships. I do me, baby. I do me. You're just along for the ride. Yeah, I know that they they don't have anyone to work in the they don't okay so uh, you might want to talk to uh, JVC Paints subscribe to his channel he's in my cool content uh, so is DM James and uh, Shadow and Sword they're all in my uh, channels buttons I believe that they are if they're not let me know I know DM James is and JVC Paints is uh, you might want to talk to him you know I mean it might be worth moving back to Japan to get a cheap house because if your house is paid for and you can work remotely. Well, then you are truly 100% free. You're you're in the you're in the uh, you're in the master race, basically. You know, if you can work remotely, live in a foreign country, and just dude it up for the rest of your life. This is so not worth it for just a little highlight on the on the mustache. Uh, 
All right, all right. But we're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it anyway. Or ho. There we go. Mustache. Done. <laughs> They'll give you a ghost farm. Well, yeah, and they're being very pragmatic about it, but at the same time, they don't want to bring it. You can't just rely on refugees. Number one, they don't speak the language, you know, so you don't, that, that's a huge big red flag right there that the UK didn't see coming. You let in nine, you let in 12 million migrants, a bunch of bone through the nose Africans. I do mean that in the worst possible way. Um, the, the, you let them in, they have no skills. They have no concept of the language. They can't read. They can't write. You also have to house these individuals. You have to educate these individuals. You have to keep them from getting sick, not to mention you have to give them some clothing, all at public treasury expense. That's why I mean it in the worst possible way. It was the worst possible scenario. So th that's all at public expense. It's not like when, uh, like my friend Bo comes from, he, his family comes straight from China. They did their paperwork. They, they lived in Japan for X amount of time. They got the bleep out of China. They came here and Bo majored in something that is actually needed, that we actually need. We need accountants. We need engineers. I, we, we can always mobilize high schools to pick fruit. That's what they used to do. Cindy Crawford, before she was a model, she's like, well, I lived in a rural area, and uh, when we wanted money, around harvest time, we'd all just we'd all leave, just leave school early and pick corn and harvest uh, the crops. That's what you do. If you, if you have a shortage of pickers, you mobilize the high school, and you pay a decent wage to the high school students, all right? And you'd be surprised how much work they can get done, you know, if they come back daily, just to, to put the stuff in baskets. Then you have your normal day laborers come and sort the crop out. But bringing people in that do not speak the language at public expense, they're paying for that big time. It's bankrupted their social health care system too. You know, it hasn't done them any favors. Especially now that they're in their third, they're basically gotten to their third generation. The third generation is even more radically Islamic than their parents were. And they're, they're, and they're on the dole. They're on the dole. So, like, the plan of these people are going to come in and do the meat old jobs that normal citizens don't want to do, that's been, that's been debunked, you know? So, yeah, I would go in and, you know, if I could buy a farm, I would do it. But about the only thing I could think to grow is uh, pumpkins and onions and see if I can sell my crops to the local pig farmer. Well, I might as well buy my own pigs at that price, you know? If I, if I can get a house for 60 grand, I'll buy my own pigs. And breed wild boar. That's good eating. Or you get a bunch of Arabs from the Middle East, and they're not bilingual. They're they're not bilingual either. You know, so it's like you you you, you bring them here, and it's like, oh, I hope you get a job. <laughs> I hope you get a job paying taxes to to support the Ponzi scheme that is the socialist system. And a lot of Western governments are bankrupt. The United States, I, 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 we are in debt up to our eyeballs, mostly because of the welfare state. 90, I'm going to say 85% of the U.S. spending, 85% of our budget is entitlements. And it's crippling us. You know, you want to pay off the natural, national debt, just kill the welfare state tomorrow and then tell everybody on Social Security the debt has been paid. <laughs> and then when people riot, and that would just be everybody, I could see some Secret Service guy walking up Pennsylvania, running up Pennsylvania Avenue. They're rioting. Oh, God. How many Trump supporters are there? No, it's everybody. It's everybody. And that, that's where we are at in the West. And unfortunately, you know, you can't. And the, I will tell you now that you cannot bribe women to have kids. The only thing you could do is take some of their rights away. 
Afghanistan understands this. Any woman that was appointed by the United States government to some government position, they got sacked out of their positions and were sent back to the kitchen. All right. So if like if you have to pass a law saying that a girl, once she graduates from high school, can't have better than a 30 hour work week, better she can't have better than a part time job age 18 to 27. They can't work better than a part time job and they can't go to college. They'd be more likely to find a husband. But if you throw free money at them, they'll they'll just go to college and major in useless they'll major in useless crap. That that has been proven. If you throw free money at women to go to college, they will most of the time pick easy useless majors. It's T O H U G Oh, it's T O H U T O U H T H O U G for T for thought, not T H O T. Sorry about that. You know, yay English majors. It's there, not there. Oh, yay English majors. They're so great, you know. And they, they, or they major in early childhood development. Great, that's great. You need, there, there, there's a stud, there is a degree field called early childhood development. Really? Really? There, there's a degree field for babysitter? That's the problem we've ran into. Couldn't spell thought. God damn it. The tumblers are going to come after me for that one. <sighs> it's there, not there. Yay, English majors. You know, and it's... So I, I don't know what to tell, like, westernized, feminized countries because, you know, that's, the normal shit isn't working. If you, entitle women to, if you entitle women too much and you tell them to get jobs and they start out earning men, they damn sure aren't getting married. And if they start out earning their husbands, a lot of times they'll just divorce their husbands. Bl Blind Sword, Zatoichi is an awesome one. I love Zatoichi. Um, I'm, I was probably, I'm, I'm probably going to buy Zatoichi meets Yojimbo, uh, pretty soon. Uh, you know, I usually buy like one movie on Amazon every other month. Uh oh, struggling with my connection. That's great. I do not want to hear that. We'll keep it open. Tell me if my quality starts to, uh, starts to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, go go to crap on you, and if we have to, we'll just end it here. Oh, condition excellent. What? I, okay, never mind. Love that. All right, going through the chat. The the UK saw it coming. They saw the problems coming, and you know their their answer was immigration. Open up the floodgates. Let these people let these unskilled workers in. And, you know, hopefully they'll uh, do the jobs that nobody else wants to do. Unfortunately, they, they're proving that they don't do jobs, period. The Dark Lord, Tony Blair. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Uh, he was, uh, wasn't he the um, prime minister when Diana got shot? That was a long time ago. So, okay, so is this in Japan, Tugboat Z? You get 3,000 or more if you have, uh, what do you call it, um, kids in Japan? I, I do know that they have a system for having kids in Japan. I, I, I just don't know how much you get. You delivered your son in the living room? That is some uh, medieval stuff right there. That's some alpha male stuff. It's like, you just boiled some water. I got this. I'll catch that, baby. You got a catcher's mitt. You're like, clock, clock. <laughs> nice. And that is in Japan? Yeah. I, I don't know. And, you know, just it, it's just crazy how they thought that that would actually be the, the, uh, the problem solver there. But, like, you know, if they're not paying taxes and they don't have jobs... And the problem is a lot of the uh, migrants that come in over the southern border, they, they're just, they get jobs 
and then they have anchor babies, and then they get welfare because they have the anchor babies. And that's a huge problem there. Whereas, like, they should be sent home after the season. They should literally be sent home after the seasons. Or, or you should start taxing remittances. You know, it's funny how they'll t uh, Biden talked about wanting to uh, tax waiters and waitresses on their tip revenue and make sure that you weren't making more than $600 a month on PayPal, yet they never talk about taxing the remittances that get sent back, you know. Yeah, it's a bitter, it's a bitter subject, and you know, I, just, I don't know what country. If Japan had to open up their uh, country, I, I, I don't, to uh, migrants, I don't know where those migrants would come from. You know, uh, they, you know what they should do is incentivize uh, passport bros. If you, it, it, you know, because then you at least with like uh, people who come from the West, you'll have a higher level of expertise, and you'll have a want to learn the language, and you know, they could actually pay, they can do this thing called patriate. I know I'm just a third rate miniature painter on the internet. Third rate. And with a little luck, I might move up to second rate. But I don't hold my breath. Oh, red. Even then, I still miss spots. It's a touchy subject. Yeah. leather braces. I'm going to finish off the leather on these guys. We've got plenty of battery. For once, my battery is going to last the entire stream. Does that make anybody scared? It makes me scared. I've still got to buy some batteries on eBay. Well, yeah, that's the, so. This is what England. This is what the UK didn't understand. England belongs to the white Anglo-Saxon English citizen. All right, there you go. There was a. The, 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 that's uh, the best way to describe it. Britain belongs to the British people. All right, and uh, Japan it, it is notoriously. I heard the Japanese are racist as crap. Racist as shit too. You know there there are there are places that you in Kabuki Town where white people aren't even allowed to go. Do I fault them for that? No, because Japan is for the Japanese. All right, Japan is is for the Japanese. That is literally no bull. No, because what is a country like Japan without the Japanese? It's just an island. It ceases to exist. What is the UK without the white Anglo-Saxon? It's just uh, it's just an island. It's an island that got inhabited by Africans and became part of northernmost Africa. There you go. Who were the Celts? We don't know. That, that there you go. That that's that's the that, that's what they forgot. You know. Yeah, it's it's cool that you can be charitable and everything, but at the end of the day, 
that was that that's the country that a lot of people are, are, are descended from you know that's that that has an ancient roots what is greece without the greeks you know It's kind of why the French surrendered during World War II because they didn't want to. They didn't want to have another Battle of uh, Verdun. You know, the the, the command. You know, for, uh, the French high command at that time were all World War One survivors, and they didn't. They didn't want to see another Verdun. They didn't want to see it. They didn't. France didn't have a baby boom like the rest of the Europe after World War II, and uh, I think it was Philippe Pétain said, uh, "What is France without the French?" And they surrendered. As heartbreaking as that sounds, as mean as that sounds, you know, it's it, it's just it's a it's a fact. Um, I, I have never had painting lessons. I grabbed a paintbrush and I just kept going. I kept painting. I kept painting. I attritioned my skills. Um, I, I got my, I, I got my skills through attrition and years of doing this shit. Um, I also watched some YouTube tutorials when I found out that they existed and everything, you know. Um, but, uh, White Dwarf was, uh, another one of those sources to, to learning that, um, what is an LGS in the UK? You live up in Ireland? That's awesome. Is it Oh, a local game store. I got it. Yeah, sorry. Um uh, if there if you can get some lessons from your local game store, yeah, go ahead and do it. Um but you can pretty much learn anything you need to know like fixing a car. I learned how to fix my radiator uh for my Toyota Camry online. You know, Big Daddy Internet, that's what they call them. Leave the stream open for another eight minutes. We'll call it good, gentlemen. I appreciate each and every one of you. Oh, and the biggest thing that comes with immigration right now is that if you try to open up the gates in Japan to migrants, they have a bond yield crisis. Like the United States, I mean, I already heard that we bailed out Credit Suisse and the Bank of England with printed money. There is a bond, uh, there is a bond yield crisis that could occur if, uh, we raise the, if we raise the interest rates here in the States too fast, it'll collapse the bond market, and we will wake up and money won't work. That's where like, oh, we're going to do another 25 basis points. And it's so funny to see the market just go up and down, up and down, up and down. Like a retarded roller coaster. Oh, what? Jerome Powell sneezed and got up on the left side of his bed this morning, everybody. Panic. Panic sell everything. All this so that it, so that it looks on, I mean, all this, they're doing all this. They're collapsing the uh, commodities market and natural gas and oil to basically declare victory in a headline on on inflation. Look, we, and uh, and declare victory against uh, Biden's, uh, uh, not, not by Putin's energy war. And I heard they're burning coal in the UK and Europe because they don't have the natural gas necessary coming from, uh, from Russia. You know, they're burning coal to stick at the Putin. just so they can keep their reserves. And here in the United States, we've basically allowed Freeport uh, LNG to reopen, and um, I was surprised that they allowed that to happen. And then, um, 
we're importing natural gas from Canada <laughs> to keep the pro the domestic price low on the commodities market. All for a headline. I've never seen such manipulation in my entire life. And I've only been in the stock market game for like two and a half years. on there all right leathers on let's double check his legs of course i missed that yeah but tugboat z check out jvc paints and speak a little japanese to that man for me We actually got a lot of work done today on stream. Hell yeah. Zap. Look at that. Do their faces up. And uh, I believe they're done. After we get their faces on. And we're just using a little bit of dwarf flesh or barbarian flesh. That's what I'm using. might have to do two layers on the faces yeah two layers the man's two layers good thing I thinned it out beforehand One got that one in one. I think that the old world will be successful sales-wise, but I think it will fizzle out much the same way 30K fizzled out in stores. It's, uh, one, the buy-in, all right, is going to be, it's going to be as high as any 40K army. That's number one. I don't know how much of a re-sculpt that they're going to do. Uh, on the uh, on the models themselves, like there are a lot of orcs that came out. Oh, what's up, man? <laughs> the the next uh, video uh, Exodite will deal with GW Wargamers. That's the Holy Diver show, and it's going to be a Patreon exclusive until the first week of uh, weekend of March. So you know, if you want to help me out, you can watch it there. But uh, the old world, as far as like uh, sales. Um, and the and the way that Games Workshop markets their product, yes, it will be a complete success in terms of getting money off of the whales. But it will fizzle out because people only have the attention span of the goldfish, number one. Um, they might get back some of the angry 8,000 customers that they had who uh, boycotted Sigmar initially. They'll get back some of the old guard veterans like that. And then... Um, I do, the, the rest of their market share that they need, the rest of the customers that they need to come in, the, whether or not Old World is going to be successful will hinge on the Warhammer Total War crowd. It will 100% hinge on the Warhammer Total War crowd. And if those guys don't come in, if those guys don't come in, 
um, it won't be successful. They need a lot of those guys to come in. But not a lot of those guys are tabletop gamers. So, um, yeah, it, it will be sales-wise, but it will fizzle out. It will fizzle out. All right, so now that these guys have all their uh, leather and flesh on and they've been done up, last thing I'm going to do is wash them with a little bit of a Strong Tone ink wash. And hopefully my battery lasts for just long enough to do that. What is up, HS? Yeah, they are. Most you are absolutely right. Most gamers are lazy with a capital L X night. They are lazy. Yeah, I, I don't know what they're going to do, Sculpt Range. Um, I think that um, every autistic dude was, like, talking about this kind of thing uh, that they do, you know, but you can't do that because it's already being done. This can actually be copyrighted, you know, I, 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 to an extent, this this kind of a formation right here. Um, you know, a lot of games have already done that, but I want, I want them to be square and square, rank and plank forever, the way that it was, just bring it back the way that it was, make a few changes to make the game go faster. How about instead of playing a two-hour game, we're playing a game for an hour and a half. I've never had a game of Conquest go longer than an hour. No, they won't. People who play video games are too busy trading meme stocks online and playing the next game. I would love to be wrong, though. I'd love to see some people come in there. I would love to be wrong. Let's hurry up and get this uh, on here before we end out the stream. Take this brush. All right. We're just going to drown them. Drown them. We can get one and we'll, if you got anything to say or anything to ask, get it out now. So I got to, I got to edit the next Holy Diver show and get it up there for the patrons to watch. And so that I know, so I know that if I'm going on a good course and I can make, I can always improve, you know, uh, like anything that I do, even with painting or making the show, um, I always believe that I can always improve and get better at whatever it is I want to do. Two more minutes, people. Oh, yeah, get it on there. Yeah, that's sexy. <laughs> yeah, baby. Provide that shade.
Alrighty, you're the last one for stream today. Yes, I have a Stompa, DM James. Um, I showed them off in one of the streams, if you go back. Uh, not, don't have time to get them out right now, as uh, you know we're going to be ending here pretty quick. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it, it, larger scale games are nice. They're nice when you have the time to play them and, you know, and just relax and play a big game. That's fun. It's a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. You're a game designer? I didn't think I'd... Oh, wow. That's awesome. Once you know how the game works, that's why I don't leave the Super Nintendo. I don't leave the Super Nintendo that awesome, that, that much. You know? I, I only play video games when I'm waiting for paint to dry. Well, let's get this guy washed. And we'll call it all good for now. All good in the hood. Yeah, lots of wash. Because these ones are a little bit, they got brighter colors than their comrades. I wanted some bright, some, some dark. Let's, let's get some coverage. Um, yeah, death, I, I use two death dreads in my uh, goth list, and uh, I don't give them any weaponry. They just go out there with the four claws, and they sit next to Gasgul. So I bring Gasgul, Magruk, Thraka. I bring two death dreads. Uh, each is their own heavy slot. Um, sometimes I'll run them together, depending on the situation before the game begins. When I see what the other guy has, I'll let him know that I'm running them as a dread mob. But um, I run them like that because uh, they just, when they're next to Gazcool, they perform really well because they get to re-roll their hits. And in a goth list, if you roll some sixes, you'll get extra hits. So, uh, and Killicans, well, if they have rocket launchers, they hit on fours. And at 35 points a model, that's really good. They finally gave you some cheap four-plus shooting. So having, if you're running bad moons and you have... Um, and you have uh, two units of killer clans in your list. You know that that that's some good shooting there. Into the trash. All right. Well, that was a good session, gentlemen. Um, as you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But this is where I have to end it. And in case I don't see you again, keep painting, keep playing, and stay metal, my friends. Letting the patrons know now that the uh, new Holy Diver show should be available tonight or the uh, following morning on Sunday the 26th. Um, yeah, I, I get you there. SNES games, meh. Genesis all day, hell yeah. All right. And uh, until I see you again, stay metal, my friends. Thanks for watching. Always a pleasure.